welcome to a Starter and a Chaser podcast on location at Market Garden Brewing Company. So cow farts created a methane gas, which in turn killed all the Martians. Oh. Oh, welcome to a Starter and Chaser podcast, where weekly we review one whiskey, one beer, just for you guys. I'm whiskey connoisseur Joe Clark. And I am professional brewer John Passo, and we are still on location in Cleveland, Ohio at Market Garden Brewing Company for our month-long review of some of their beers. I'm wearing my uh, Cleveland clothing beer union worker shirt nice. in honor of that. And uh, what do we have for the starter, Joe? So we have a New Riff Backsetter Bottled and Bond Kentucky Bourbon Straight Whiskey. And for the chaser, of course, from Market Garden Brewing Company, their Pin High Czech Pilsner. Now, New Riff, well, um, that's done in Kentucky, right? Yeah, it's in uh, Newport, Kentucky. By It's owned by Ken Lewis. It's a family-owned distillery. Uh, started in 2014. It is a all cellar mash, bottled and bond mash bill. It is 65% corn, 30% rye, 5% malted barley. Uh, minimum of four years because it is a bottled and bond product. And of course, it is 100 proof, being bottled, bottled and, bond. and bond. And this is their backsetter. John, do you want to give a little history about backsetting? Yeah, so backsetting is basically uh, after distillation, they draw off some of the acidic liquid that is uh, still in the mash and then they set that aside and put it into a new mash uh, and that actually will kickstart fermentation. It acidifies it a little bit and that's another word for it is sour mashing. So back setting, this particular back set that they used was peated malted barley. So this is going to have some of those possibly scotch notes. Ooh, yeah. can't say that in Kentucky. No, you can't. Gosh. <laughs> I'm expecting that also because, you know, peated whiskeys, you know, scotch. Scotch and smoky. Yeah. So uh, what are you going to get on the nose here? I'm curious. Let's take a look at the color a little bit. Oh, yeah. It's a nice, deep, dark, kind of brownish, orangish. Yeah, take it up there. Nice and thick. Nice thick nice. drink. Yeah, it's got a... It takes a little bit for it to come down. Oh, yeah. It takes wow. a while. It takes a while. Yeah, it sure does. Is there this stars. glue? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what are you pulling off the nose on this one? So I'm getting that peaty, smoky, okay. kind of hint of like that an Isla Scotch would kind of give you. Not as powerful or as heavy, but it's there. It's like a nice... Wow, it's a nice mash between on the nose like scotches and bourbons coming together really mm. nicely on this very well balanced and you get your typical caramel heavy caramel notes with them Ooh, man you do pick up some of that rye it's a higher rye mash bill so it's 30 percent and uh, new riff generally does high rye yes. mash bills the the owner and all their workers are fans of high rye so yeah. that's kind of the theme that they have in most yeah. of their whiskeys their bottled and bond rye and single barrel rye are incredible so just a note <laughs> but do you get any of the uh the ethanol coming off of this it's 100 proof not really a little bit of heat but it's very it's kind of smooth to be okay. honest with you john Let's dive in. All right. Prost. Cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Corn sweetness and then smoke. Mm. Little heat. It's got a little heat. Little heat. Sides of the mouth on this one. At first it was center of the tongue for me and then quickly moved to the yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't Kentucky hug you. It kind of fades away. I'm going to take another hit to get kind of warm my palate back up to this. Ooh, I like this one. Mm. Wow. Yeah. A lot of corn. Wow. Rice spice. Smoke. Peat. Yeah. Campfire. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Caramel. Oh, just yeah. A, I get just a dash. Do you get a lot of caramel? Do you get a little I'm caramel? getting a lot of caramel. Vanilla. It's it's actually it's pretty complex yeah. to be honest with you. It, it's like having basically, if you want to be, get real basic about it, John, a really nice bourbon and a scotch that have been blended together. I'm getting a lot of those notes from overseas and from here at home, and it's uh, it's really nice. It's very caramely, 
vanilla, very peaty, smoky, campfirey. It's kind of I'm going to mirror what he says this time because he's really <laughs> spot on it. Thank you. It's it's a thick drink. It, it's kind of heavy in the mouth. A little bit of heat. It does go to the side of the tongues. Does not carry down through your chest at all. It's very easy to drink at 100 proof. Um, I am really enjoying the rye spices. To me, is what lingers on the back, and I'm, it kind of turns into a nice rye whiskey for me. I'm, I do get, a, a, like Joe says, a little bit of the rye in the back end, but now for me, the predominant uh, finished flavor is uh, brown sugar. I'm getting mm -hmm. a lot of like raw brown sugar on the finish. Okay. Um, there is just a slight barrel char yeah. to the finish as well. It's very subtle. Uh, wow, this is this is this is good. Really complex and really good. And the cool part is this was a uh, this was a distiller exclusive, uh, so you had to reserve your bottle and go down yep. and pick it up. So it was, uh, we were very lucky to have uh, have this one in our possession. And this bottle was also donated, donated to us by uh, Stephen Steph Crooks. Uh, thank you. This is another fantastic drink. Um, mm -hmm. I know you were kind of mixed on this one, and for me, it's right up my alley. Yeah. I love scotch. I love bourbon, and it's like two of them married into one bottle. Absolutely. All about it. And if you have a bottle you'd like to donate, shoot us an email at whiskeyandbeer at starterandchaser.com. And if you'd like to support the podcast, be sure to visit us at patreon.com backslash starterandchaser. Well, this was the starter. We're going to take a quick break and be right back with the, the chaser. chaser. Welcome back to the Starter and Chaser podcast, and we're now back for The, the Chaser. Chaser. And for The Chaser, we have, of course, from Market Garden Brewing Company, their Pin High Czech Style Pilsner. Now, um, Market Garden, this is our whole month-long review of some of their products on location. Market Garden Brewery was started back in 2011 by four separate people, including master brewer Andy Trevikram, who once worked for Cleveland, uh, Cleveland's own Great Lakes Brewing Company, and and Milton Delaware's Dogfish Head Brewing Company before he came and started Market Garden. Now, the Pin High was done in collaboration with the Cleveland Metro Parks, and part of the proceeds of the sales of this beer go back to the Cleveland Metro Parks. It's a Czech style Pilsner, which you haven't had. You've had most of the Bohemian styles, yeah. so it'll be a new experience for Joe. It's 4.8% ABV and 36 IBUs. I wanted to point something out real quick while yeah. John is posting this. I mean, how cool is the scenery behind us, guys? <laughs> I mean, look at this. This is so cool and how nicely it's laid out, how beautiful the construction is here. It's a really, really nice facility. When you can and when it is open for tours again, you gotta come down and check this out. It's it's excellent here, guys. And the service is second to none. Absolutely. Thanks. Shout out to Liz for uh, yes. helping us get set up here today uh, at the brewery. So, uh, beautiful head on this. Nice gold nice color. Let's yellow throw that gold. to the camera. Yeah, yellow gold. Good head. Yeah. It smells like a pilsner. Smells like a pilsner. Looks like a pilsner. Now a let's see malty. if it tastes like a pilsner. And a little malty, maybe. Okay. This is kind of giving me that little bit of the grassy note to it too. I'm, I'm kind of like associating that with maybe pilsners. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm not finding correctly in words what I'm really getting on the nose. Mm -hmm. Uh, it could just be the types of hops that you're picking yeah. up that are okay. typically used in Pilsners I know. might lend that grassy note that you're yeah. you're getting. I know some of these lighter beers aren't like super complex on the nose in general because of the way they're crafted correctly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. But on the palate, that's where things change. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? I think palate we should dive in. dive in. Prost. Mm. Damn, dude. Another mm. one. Wow. Yeah. Crisp Pilsner. Mm. Super drinkable. Uh, there is a little bit of a malt sweetness right up front that yeah. that dies down very quickly uh, because being a lager, it will be crisper on the back end. Czech Pilsners are a little different than the Bohemian style. Bohemian styles are very dry and also a little bit more hop forward with their bitterness. This is very Whereas refreshing. Czech Pilsners. Yeah. Uh, have a little bit of a maltiness to the front end and less hops. So when you said you noticed a little bit of malt sweetness on the nose, instantly I'm like, check Pilsner for you. Okay, cool. So I'm glad I 
picked it up correctly. Yeah. And also, this is kind of mouth-watering to me. Like, you just want to keep going back and Absolutely. it's very uh, hydrating. But highly drinkable. And now that we're into almost the summer season, this is great. This is actually a brand new beer for uh, Market Garden. Ooh. Uh, the can we got is only two weeks old and they just released it about two weeks ago. Oh, okay. So this is a brand new beer and be sure to stop by the brewery or Absolutely. pick up a can uh, when you see it in the stores. So. We went over malty, a little malt sweetness up front, uh, crisp. Are you picking up any hops? Are you picking up any of the grassy note that you were picking up on uh, yes, the Yes, I do. I actually picked that up more on the back end, kind of a nice earthy note to it, grassy note. Um, I get the grass straight through for me. I get oh, the hop bitterness to it. Mm -hmm. um, but which it's is not nice. No, it's very subtle. It's well very balanced. well balanced. Yeah, mm -hmm. very well balanced. It's not, you know, even if you're not into the, like the bittery hops and stuff like that, this isn't yeah. powerful on that. It's very easy to drink. It's very mouth watering. Absolutely. It's got a nice kind of hue to it. I like the way it looks. Um, perfect amount of carbonation again. Like some, because some of the stuff we reviewed, either some, it's like, oh, not enough or way too much. These mm -hmm. guys seem to really hone that hit, hit that balance really yeah, nicely like and really well uh, as you're talking here I'm listening and I'm also picking up a little bit of uh, that earthy note is coming through mm -hmm. more on the back end for me okay. the grassiness like from start to finish I get but on the finish I get a nice little bit of earthy hop note to it I'm wondering if they're using noble hops for this hmm. yeah. by the way if you enjoy hops post below what you think uh, your favorite hop is and see if we've had a beer that has had right. that in there. Yeah. So, what do you think? Very cool drinks we've had today. Very cool Yet drinks. Again. Yeah, and I'm, I'm loving that we continue the tradition rolling of good beers. I mean, so we're at Market Garden. Things, man? Those, um, those are uh, either one of their boil kettles or their mash tons. This is where the uh, the wort that eventually gets fermented and turns into beer is created. So, and uh, nice stainless steel tanks. They use stainless steel because it's easily cleaned uh, and uh, doesn't hold a lot of bacteria or anything like that, or any in theory. It looks very cool. Now, New Riff. What were your final thoughts on New Riff? I love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. If you can get your hands on one of these bad boys right here, if you like scotch and bourbon, this is where it's at. It, if you're like, like some guys, maybe not be really into it, like Stefan doesn't like PD stuff and stuff like that. I remember him Stephen who donated the bottle. Donated the bottle. Um, but for me, he he messaged me and he goes, "This is up. I know this is up your alley." And he's 100% correct. I love scotch. I love bourbon. I can't not love that. For me, I'm starting to get into the PD stuff, like our 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 bags and uh, eyeless scotches. <clears throat> so the fact that this has got that really signature Kentucky bourbon note to it mm -hmm. and the peatiness, smokiness on top of it. I mean, it's a win-win combo. And when I sip that, man, it is like sitting next to a campfire out in the woods. It is just transports you and it's awesome when the liquid can do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, yeah, I'm going to say what Joe said. If you can find a bottle of this, go for it. Great job, New Riff. And if you're a rye fan, you get that rye spice on that too. Absolutely. So that's another point I wanted to make real Absolutely. quick. Absolutely. And if you're a whiskey fan, you get a whiskey note on there too. So <laughs> <laughs> Market Garden Pin High Chuck Pilsner. What are your final thoughts on that, Joe? Very well crafted, very well balanced. Um, I love how these guys kind of keep getting that carbonation just perfect on their mm -hmm. beers because sometimes it can be overpowering. Um, it's very smooth, very easy to drink. Uh, it's a nice light beer for summertime. This is my first introduction into Market Garden beers in general. Or no, that's no. my second introduction. Second introduction. Um, we're trying some new stuff with them. Uh, it's fantastic. It really is. I, I would, this is another daily drinker. <sighs> yeah, it's, uh, they are just crushing it with very well balanced, very drinkable beers. And <clears throat> they do a lot of different styles. These are just uh, some of the lighter ones that we're starting the series off with. And we're going to get into some of their barrel aged ones. So be sure to stay tuned. But yeah. this is just an amazing two style check pills uh, drinkable carbonation like joe said is great Perfect. great mouthfeel yeah. uh summer Mouth season watering. man i'm gonna be crushing six packs of these left and right yeah absolutely so, so that is this week's on location episode 
in conjunction with Market Garden Brewing Company. Be sure to hit subscribe. Uh, send Can't us watch message. us. Need to listen to us. Links down below. Links down below. And uh, we will check you out next week and hope you guys check us out for another episode of a Starter and a Chaser podcast. So now back to this cowspiracy of them, the methane gas killing all the Martians. Do you think that's what they're doing here on Earth? Could be true. Should we beware the Ides of Moo? Maybe that's why we're mar- wearing the mask now. That's why. Methane, not the COVID. <laughs> it is a cowspiracy.